Have you ever wondered what happens after life? Well, today's spiritual encounters may have you pondered what's in store for us after death. Luckily, we will not be going into this unknown realm alone. We will be accompanied by these amazing narrators, Darkness Prevails, Joey's Nightmares, and Blue Spooky. If you would like to hear more from them, please check out their channels by clicking on their icons. Also, you can find us on our website to submit your stories. We will be choosing the two best stories and giving the authors a $50 gift card. Now, without further hesitation, let's begin. Number 1 The Ghost from the Ashes by Tala I would like to share with you my experience that happened when I was about 15 or so which was a few years ago now. I was with my cousin, who I will call Marla. Marla and I used to hang out all the time. We were more like best friends, if anything. We used to go visit Marla's grandparents quite often. They were her dad's parents, so they weren't directly related to me. But we were a close-knit community, so everyone knew each other. So, anyway, one day we visited quite early in the morning and we ended up staying all day. We had dinner and treats and all kinds of things. At around 12.30 p.m., my cousin asked if we can go up into the attic and sort through some of her stuff from when she was a kid. Her grandparents said it was okay, so we made our way up to the attic, and everything was fine for a little while. We came across a box, and inside were newspaper cuttings, old letters, and other weird things. On the inside of the box, there was something written. This belongs to Jesse Quant. And as Marla read out that name, a strong feeling of being pulled backwards came over the both of us at the same time. We both looked at each other wide-eyed and made for the ladder. Of course, Marla made sure she was down first, but I was practically on her shoulders. We almost flew down the stairs, and as we made it into the living room, Marla's grandparents asked us if everything was okay. We told them that we were fine, so they just smiled and turned away. That day went on, and we started to hear bumps and bangs coming from upstairs. No one could have been up there. It was only Marla's grandparents who lived in that house, and they were downstairs with us watching TV. I started to need to use the bathroom, and I begged Marla to come upstairs with me. And she said yes, because she needed to use it as well. So, I finished in the bathroom, and Marla tells me to wait for her. So I stood outside the bathroom, which was opposite the room where you get to the attic. I started to smell a smoky kind of odor, and I started to get really nervous, so I shouted for Marla to hurry up. She mumbled something, but I didn't hear what it was. The smell started to get stronger, like something was burning. And I looked through the hinges of the open door, and I could see something unnaturally black staring at me. I saw it move, and I screamed as loud as I could and ran downstairs. Marla came tearing out of the bathroom. I think she still had her knickers around her ankles, but she didn't care, and neither did I at that point. Marla's grandparents were dozing off downstairs, so, they didn't hear a thing. We really wanted to leave, but we didn't want to wake them. And we also didn't want to leave without saying goodbye. It was a horrible situation, because I just wanted to go home. We decided to wait a little bit longer, but we heard footsteps and banging upstairs. And that burning smell intensified. The ceiling light was swinging gently from the movement upstairs and it was also flickering. I started crying and we decided to leave, but we left a note saying that we'd be back another day. We did go back a couple weeks later, and we asked Marla's grandparents if they knew anybody by the name of Jesse Quant. They said they had no idea, but when we spoke to Marla's father about it, he drove us to the local library, and we found a newspaper report of a man being killed in a fire in the same house now occupied by my cousin's grandparents. Shockingly, his body was found in the same room that I saw that figure. The fire happened during the night, while the man was sleeping. 
The house was obviously cleaned up and renovated, and Marla's grandparents bought it cheap, not long after it was fit for sale. They were completely oblivious to the house's past. Or at least we think so. They have long since passed, and we never really got to ask them if they heard or seen anything. So, that's just one of my experiences, but it's the one that affected me the most. Number 2 Late Night Visitor Submitted by Vanessa this incident happened to my little brother when he was only about six or seven. He's 20 now and still tries to find a logical reason for this occurrence and lives in denial of it. My parents, however, recall this incident pretty vividly. In our home at the time, my parents' room was the first one in the hallway, then the bathroom and our bedrooms were at the very end. My two brothers shared a room and my sisters and I shared the other. Our parents always left the hallway light on for us, in case we needed to go to the bathroom, so we wouldn't be afraid, due to previous paranormal incidents. One morning, my youngest brother asked my father, Dad, in, in the middle of the night, did you go and check on us? My father asked why he was asking that. My brother told him, Because the last few nights, I hear you when you open Vanessa's door, and then you open mine and look at me. Then you close the door and walk back to your room. I know it's you because you drag your feet on the carpet. My dad said, yeah, I, I check on you guys to make sure you're okay. My brother just said, all right. Little did my brother know that it wasn't my father checking in on us and he only said that so that we wouldn't worry. That night, my dad tucked us all in, as he usually did when he was home, and we all went to sleep. Later that night, my little brother heard my dad walk down the hallway, open the door to my room, then shut it. Then he opened the door to his room. Whoever it was stared at him for what seemed like forever. Finally, he closed the door and began walking back down the hallway dragging his feet and presumably headed to my parents' room. My brother got out of bed to go talk to what he thought was my dad. He opened his bedroom door and saw this figure walk into my parents' room. He followed curiously to see my dad. When he walked into the room, he saw both my parents asleep in the bed. Then something caught his eye. A figure crouching in front of my parents' bathroom door, covering the long mirror attached to it. It was tall, but sort of crouched, with its legs slightly bent, its arms lifted, and its hands were positioned in the way someone's would be if they were pretending to be a monster, and it had a long, wavy tongue, like a serpent's. My brother instantly began screaming and crying as he jumped into my parents' bed. My parents woke up and tried to comfort him, but my brother told them what had happened, and my father made a sweep through the house. He found nothing. The nightly visits stopped, and my brother never saw that thing again. Number 3 Attacked by a Shadow by Milius, MD. In August 2015, I was visiting my parents. My parents and I were talking. I love reading about mythology. I study mythology when I'm not actually studying, and when I get a bit enthusiastic, I can get completely carried away in discussions on this subject. On one of my mythologic rampages, I was discussing the Titan Nyx. This is a titan of darkness. On that subject, my mother pitches in a little nugget of information. That talk about the dark reminds me, do you know what your eight-year-old cousin has done? Now, that particular cousin is on my father's side of the family and we don't really keep in touch that much. So I answered, no, of course not. Well, they just moved into a new place and her daughter was having trouble sleeping. 
she kept seeing something of a shadow coming out of the wall. At this point, I started getting goosebumps, not really knowing why. I'm agnostic. I love reading about mythology. I love visiting places that have mythological significance. However, I couldn't remember experiencing something paranormal or really creepy that can't be explained. My mother continued, Did you know they got a psychic over there? They removed the drapes where the shadow kept reoccurring, and now it's quiet. My feeling of discomfort kept increasing, even though I have less faith in psychics than I have in winning the lottery. I wish I had done that. It took me years when this happened to you. Now at this point my hair was standing on end. I remembered that exact thing that she was talking about. However, I hadn't thought about it for years. I couldn't remember it. But now that I can, I don't know why not. I remembered the real pressing feeling of something watching. It gave me chills. I asked what we did about it. Well, we changed the drapes and moved you to another room, then it stopped. However, I moved back to the same room when I was 12. Indeed, I never had a problem again, so I thought I'd forget about it. The dreams I've been having afterward have been messed up, so a friend and I planned to just go out. We went to the pub and started talking after a few beers. He started, So what's up? You look like crap. I told him about the nightmares that started a week ago, and the story that started this. His eyes went wide. He started, Are you for real or are you just messing with me? I never told that story except to my girlfriend. What story? He told the exact same thing. A shadow, oozing out of the wall at night, keeping him awake as a child. We started talking and he told me about shadow people. I started searching, and this is how I actually stumbled at the first stories of Darkness Prevails. Since the story, my dreams have been messed up, either drowning under a tidal wave or running from something. My personal favorites are waking up to someone standing over me with an expression of utter hate and dreaming about a white place, like the scene, We Need Lots of Guns in the Matrix, where a shadow with fangs attacks me, stabs me in the right shoulder, and me waking up, bolting upright, and a shoulder that hurts even three months after that dream. I visited the hospital with this shoulder, and nothing was wrong except a decrease in mobility. I don't know what is happening, but I am starting to train myself for lucid dreaming. At least it helps me wake up when I want to. The dreams are finally decreasing with me learning more control. However, from time to time there are still dreams happening where a shadow tries to attack me. Number 4 Assisted Living by CNA I have worked on plenty of night shifts, and very few have been creepy experiences. But this, unfortunately, was one of the creepiest. I take care of the elderly. I provide any medical or domestic care that they need in order for them to remain at home. But sometimes I have clients that live in assisted living facilities. In the morning, I took care of a couple who lived in one. The wife had become a walking vegetable after two bad strokes, and the husband was too obese to do anything without assistance. One day, I get asked by my boss to stay overnight because the husband had been hospitalized. I asked what my duties would be, and I'm told that it's a warm body case. I'd get paid just to be another warm body in the apartment, so there really were no duties. I show up for the shift, and everything's going pretty smoothly. My client is asleep, and the facility is locked up, and there's the occasional nurse or caretaker walking down the halls. Around 11 p.m., I hear a knock on the door. I look through the peephole and see one of the nurses that I'm friendly with. I open the door and we chat quietly in the hall for a bit before he leaves. He tells me not to leave my client's room unless necessary, 
because after midnight, things get weird. I just laugh it off and we go back to work. The night continues to be uneventful, and around 1am, I need some coffee. I grab the keys, lock the door behind me, and take the elevator from the third to the first floor. The ride is a little odd. Lights flickered once, and the elevator seemed to be going extra slow. I brush it off as my nerves getting the best of me. I go into the kitchen area, and see something move out of the corner of my eye. I feel my blood go cold, but walk quicker to the coffee pot. I tell myself to calm down and stop being a coward. It's all those horror movies and the creepy setting just getting to me. I feel like something is behind me. A cold shiver runs down my body, and I can feel the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. Against my better judgment, I turn around and see just the last glimpse of someone walking into the dining hall. I follow the person, and once I'm in the unlit dining hall, I call out to them. Hello? The person turns around, and all I hear is their walker hitting the floor. It's an old woman. She says back to me, Oh, I didn't know anyone was still up. I take a step back towards the lighted kitchen area. It's pretty late, I say. You should really be going to bed. What if you fell? She walked closer to me, and once in the kitchen area, says, Oh, you're right, darling, but I just enjoy the quiet of the night. She gives me a wide, toothless grin. Something about her face just unsettled me. I had seen plenty of toothless smiles before, but her face when smiling seemed so menacing. I grab my coffee and listen to the tap of her walker go towards the elevator. I heard her begin to talk to someone, but couldn't tell if she was still in the hall and going into the elevator. Either way, she wasn't my problem, especially not with that unnerving, smiling face. I took the stairs to the second floor and walked to the other side of the building to take the other elevator. I enjoy taking this route back during the day because the second floor has an open type of hallway where you can see the downstairs lobby and the piano next to the reading area with a large window from ceiling to floor. It's a very picturesque view. I looked at the lobby as I passed by and saw multiple white and gray blurry figures outside. I stopped dead in my tracks and felt my blood go cold and rushed to my feet. I told myself that it must just be foggy outside, or maybe there was some new shrubbery and in the dark my eyes were playing tricks on me. I somehow found a way to start quick walking down the hall again, but was stopped after only a few steps by the sound of keys being hit on the piano. Alarms started going off in my head, and now was the time to freak out. Now was the time to run like hell back to my client and never work here again at night. But all I could do was look back down into the lobby and stare at the piano. There was a tall, very pale, elderly person sitting there. I felt a bit of relief and began to calm down as he played a few more keys. I let out a sigh of relief as he looked up at me. His face was clearly covered in wrinkles and very gaunt, but his eyes were completely hollow and black. I felt my breath leave me and I was frozen. I couldn't comprehend anything. My mind kept saying that it must be an illusion caused by lighting or something, but everything else in me kept screaming that this wasn't an illusion. The man got up silently. Not even the bench made its usual creaking sound. He ran out of sight towards another room on the first floor. He ran, not hobbled, not walked, but ran. He didn't shuffle his feet. He didn't move at the speed of any other elderly person I'd ever seen. I lost my nerve and sprinted to the emergency stairway and ran to my client's apartment. By the time I had calmed down, I realized that I had lost my coffee along the way and my right ankle was sprained. All I cared about was that I was safe and that I wouldn't end up being in a horror movie scenario. The rest of my shift I was wide awake and would occasionally hear footsteps in the hall or knocks on the door. 
Twice, I had gotten him to investigate through the peephole, but didn't find anything and figured I shouldn't push my luck. I still do the same type of work, but I haven't gone back to that building since. I told the guy I was friendly with about it, and he said it was very common and was the reason why none of the caretakers went outside after a certain time. Number 5 The Childhood Hauntings by Lauren My story starts when I was about 4-6 to six years old. My name is Lauren, and this story occurred at the first house I lived in. It was a one-story blue house with a creepy ass shed in the back. The backyard was very large. You could fit at least three other houses in that backyard. Anyway, my backyard will have a purpose later on. The first paranormal experience I had was when I was about four years old. I was half asleep one morning, laying on my bed. Then I felt my feet and the blanket around them be pushed down. I opened my eyes because I thought it was my mom, but I was wrong. There was no one there. But I still felt the pressure on my feet. Then all of a sudden it lifted. And I was so confused, but what could I do? I got out of bed and sat in our living room. I hugged my stuffed teddy bear and looked down to it. When I looked back up, I saw a white mist. It slowly gained features, and it was an older woman. She had a nightgown, a bun in her hair, and she had no shoes. I started to freak the fuck out, and I tucked my head between my knees. I quickly looked back up, and she was gone. I told no one about this. After that, things got out of hand. My name was screamed in the voices of people who were gone. There were shadow creatures, things being dragged and thrown. My stuff kept disappearing, and there were spirits that attacked my friends and family. Fast forward about three years. My parents got divorced when I was eight. My brother, father, and I moved out of the house to our grandma and grandpa's house, which is now my aunt's. Sadly, both of our grandparents died soon after we moved in, and my dad decided to move on from my mother, so he dated a woman named Tina, but it didn't work out though. He then happily met a woman named Shari, who is now my stepmom. We moved into her house, and before we did, I will always remember seeing my grandfather's face in the mirror in the bathroom of their house. My mother was kicked out of the old house, and now others live there. All I have to say is, I hope they're happy in that house, haunted by my great-grandmother, multiple dogs that were poisoned, shadow creatures, and name-calling ghosts. Number 6 Cedar Crossing by Alyssa I. I was about six or seven when I moved into my new house in Virginia. I have lived in my house for about 13 years and I've been experiencing several different unusual things. Most seem more like isolated incidents. Others are still going on to this day. I've been convinced that my house is haunted for as long as I can remember. It began when I would be overcome with dread at seemingly random times, usually while I was in my bathroom taking a shower or brushing my teeth. This never happened in the other two bathrooms, only the one my brother and I shared. It got to the point where I would actually make excuses to use my parents' shower or just not brush my teeth. This continued for a couple of years, but then died down. That is, until I was old enough to stay home alone. That's when I began to notice a lot more. Every day, I got a powerful sensation that someone was watching me. And once, while looking into the pantry for something to eat, I felt someone's breath on the back of my neck. The weird part is, I wasn't afraid. The presence didn't seem dark or threatening. It was just there. One day, I was in my room, and a robotic toy pig fell from the back of my bookshelf onto the floor and turned itself on. The on switch was located on the pig's stomach, surrounded by the toy's four stuffed legs. 
there was no way the switch would have turned itself on just by falling. And this wasn't the only occurrence. Other things around me fall out of nowhere from secure places like the middle of the kitchen table. It didn't get much weirder than that until about a year ago. At this point, my brother was in college and I had the bathroom to myself. That's when I began to see small, brownish-red drops inside the bathtub. I didn't really think much of it, so I turned the faucet on and waited until the pressure from the shower had washed it away. I thought it was just crap that had leaked through the ceiling. This kept happening every time I went to take a shower. Then, one night, it must have been two or three in the morning, I jumped out of bed and ran to the bathroom. I had a nosebleed. This wasn't extremely uncommon for me, especially during dry weather, so I quickly took care of it and was back in bed in no time. The next morning, however, I went to the bathroom to take a shower, and the drops are in the tub again. I also notice a drop of dry blood that I forgot to clean up from my nosebleed. And I finally made the connection. It looked exactly the same as the stuff in my bathtub. It was blood. The final event that happened was about a month ago. I woke up at 5.30, as I do on most weekdays, to see something sitting on my bed. It was completely black with slightly blurred edges. I could make out a head, an arm that it was leaning on, a torso, and the thigh. Though it had no facial features at all, I still knew it was looking at me. I blinked several times because I thought it was just a trick of my eyes or a dream or something, but every time I reopened my eyes, it was still there, exactly the same as before. This went on for several moments before it disappeared. Again, I wasn't afraid, merely startled. I don't believe it wanted to hurt me. After thinking on it for so long, I believe something may have happened here long ago in that bathroom, and whatever happened, that ghost was the victim. Some other things have happened at my house. For example, one Saturday, I woke up and went outside to find something odd. There were dried foot and handprints of a grown man. Then again, it could have been something else. It looked as though the prints were sharp, as if they were claws. My father said that they were bear tracks. Yeah, I don't believe that. We may have woods in our backyard, but it's so thin that we hardly even see deer, let alone bears. So that leaves me to wonder, what was it? Another time, very recently, I went outside one early morning to walk my dog, and I heard a shriek from the other side of the woods. It was brief and shrill, like a child. Then it happened again, and again. It went off once every minute or two. This carried on for several days. I told my father, and again, he said it was an animal. This time he said a bobcat, and again, I know it's more likely a banshee than a bobcat where we live. It makes me wonder if he knows something and is just making excuses. Number 7 Dead X by Vic Pryor this story is kinda long and has two parts, so be prepared. A little bit of backstory. My boyfriend had a girlfriend who committed suicide a few months before we started dating. Also, my sister died a week before that happened. Keep in mind, my memories are slightly fuzzy on these facts. One night, I was up at almost 11, and I had finally decided to sleep. But I wasn't really tired. I had a test the next day and wanted to have a good night's sleep. And soon I felt as if I wasn't alone. But I ignored it. Every night I had my TV on so that made me feel good. And I slightly opened my eyes a little bit and noticed a figure. Short blonde hair. Maybe a blue sweater with even designs. Standing right in front of me. Considering I almost fell asleep, I didn't think much of it, so I closed my eyes again, but not even seconds later I popped open my eyes and quickly turned on the lamp. I looked back over at the spot and they were gone, no signs of anyone there, 
and I went back to sleep a few hours before I had to wake up. Okay, this is the second time. One morning my alarm went off and I went to turn it off. When I did, I noticed my friend texted me saying school was cancelled. Keep in mind I like to stay up late as hell, and because of that I decided to go back to sleep. I slept a few more hours until I woke up maybe at 8 or later. It's still fuzzy, and I was still tired, so I tried to sleep again. When I shut my eyes I started to notice it was very cold in my bedroom, and this was really weird considering my bedroom was so hot I didn't have on and this was really weird considering my bedroom was so hot I didn't have on pants. And then I noticed it wasn't only cold, it felt as if there were gusts of winds in my bedroom. I slightly opened my eyes, and I was still half asleep, but right in front of me was a figure. It looked like the one from last time. Blonde hair, blue sweater, everything. The disturbing part was I remember my bedroom door not only being open but the light was on, but there was nothing outside my door, just a bright yellow light, and the entity was running towards me. Once I closed my eyes and opened them back up, my door was closed, my room was hot again, and I was alone. I have a theory it was my boyfriend's ex seeing me for some godforsaken reason. If I saw her eyes though, I'd know it's her. Why? Because she had purple eyes. And if it wasn't her, then I'm worried. Hell, I already am. Number 8 Look Out by Kai About three years ago, my mother and I lived in a two-story house. And first everything was fine and dandy till three months after. My mother referred to herself as a witch. She loved to communicate with the dead. She loved to have any contact with spirits. One night, my mother had stayed up to use her Ouija board. She wanted to try and communicate with my grandfather, who had recently passed away. About an hour later, I had woken up to someone shaking me. It was my mother. She told me she had come into contact with my grandfather. She was smiling and full of tears. I went downstairs and in the middle of the living room floor, I saw my mom's Ouija board and a few candles. We put our fingers on the planchette and began talking to my grandfather, or so we thought. About an hour after communication, I started to get skeptical. Every question my mother had asked got a false answer. So I decided to ask a question that only my grandfather and I would know the answer to. I put my finger on the planchette and I asked, What happened on May 8th in 2012? I got a reply, but it was not what I was looking for. The planchette slowly started to move, and when it was finished, it spelled out the word nothing. Now, on that day was when my life was changed forever. It was the day I lost my baby boy. As soon as I got that reply, I immediately started blessing the house. After about two hours of blessing, I finally didn't feel so uneasy. I went to bed, but unfortunately, I was woken up again four hours later to the sound of my mother screaming. I rushed downstairs to see her on the floor holding all of our family pictures that had been smashed and thrown on the floor. We did some exploring to see if anything in the house had been tampered with. To our surprise, there it was in the middle of the floor. The Ouija board was exactly in the same place as yesterday, but I swore I had picked it up and put it back in the attic. Along with the Ouija board were three black candles that were lit in a glow that neither me nor my mother had lit ourselves. Ever since that day, we hear voices, voices of different genders and different ages. We see black shadow people everywhere. It's been three years, and unfortunately, my mother has died at a young age. I've since moved out of that house and moved to my own place, but unfortunately, the activity has picked up. I can actually say that for once in my life, that I am very, very afraid. Number 9 
Strange Happenings at an Old Newport House by Sadie When I was 16, my mother decided to rent a house in Newport, Rhode Island for a long weekend in July. Joining my mom and I on this mini vacation were my younger sister, Shelly, her best friend, Dee, and my mom's best friend, Nancy. We arrived at the house at about 6 o'clock Friday evening and proceeded to unpack. The house itself was older, but beautiful. The furniture looked like something out of a magazine. There was a giant screen TV in the main living room and a bedroom right near it. My mom and Nancy snagged that room as it had an end suite bathroom. Shelly and Dee took the remaining room on the main floor. There were two bedrooms upstairs, so I snagged the largest one. As I was putting away my clothes, I heard a soft creaking, almost like a door moving slowly. I looked around just in time to watch my room door slowly shutting. Now I can be a very skeptical person, and a door creaking shut isn't something that would scare me. I just assumed that a draft, though I had felt none, had caused the door to move slightly. I finished unpacking and headed downstairs. It was then that I noticed the door to the attic. It was right outside my room. I gently turned the handle and opened the door. As the door swung open, a blast of cold air hit me and my room door slammed shut. Instantly, the hair on the back of my neck prickled and I shut the door. It was the middle of July, and we were having a hot spell. Shouldn't the attic have been stiflingly hot? It wasn't. It was cool, as if there was an air conditioner set to high cool up there. I looked warily at my now-closed bedroom door, and decided to go downstairs. The rest of that evening was uneventful. We ordered pizza and relaxed by the pool in the backyard. Eventually, around midnight, we all headed to bed. As I climbed the stairs, I remembered the incident earlier and felt a little nervous heading to my room. But when I opened the door, nothing seemed strange. I crawled into bed and to my surprise, fell asleep rather quickly. Creaking woke me up at around three in the morning. It sounded like someone was slowly walking back and forth in the attic. I won't lie. I was terrified, but desperately tried to rationalize what I was hearing. Maybe it was just an animal. I listened to the creaking as it continued. Finally, I threw the covers over my head and shut my eyes in an attempt to sleep, which I eventually did. I woke up the next morning and the first thing I noticed was that my door was closed. I distinctly remember having left it open. I asked my mom if she had closed it when I got down for breakfast, and she just told me no. She then asked why I couldn't sleep. What do you mean? I asked her. Well, Nancy and I heard someone walking down the hall last night. I had assumed it was you. I shook my head and she shrugged. Maybe it was my sister. Of course, my sister and Dee denied that either of them had been awake, and the issue was dropped. We spent the rest of that day sightseeing and at the beach. At around 7 o'clock, I decided I wanted to head back to the house. I had had enough of shopping, and just wanted to relax. Thankfully, the house was within walking distance of the shops, so I headed back home. I quickly changed into my pajamas and sat on the couch, TV on and book in my hands. About 45 minutes later, I heard a door open and close, followed by the sounds of footsteps. Thinking everyone had come back, I called out to them. Why are you guys back so soon? Silence. I leaned back on the couch to look into the main hallway that leads to the front door. It was closed and there was no one in the hallway. I got up and slowly made my way down the hall. Mom? My voice wavered. 
I made it to the front door and looked into the driveway. Her car wasn't there. I went back to the living room and sat on the couch, listening intently. Silence again. I decided that my ears had just played a trick on me. I tried to continue reading, and couldn't, so I focused on the TV. Suddenly, the footsteps started again. They were upstairs in the attic, and were slowly making their way down. I was frozen to the couch. The footsteps were on the stairs now. I could hear them slowly creaking as something invisible came downstairs. Two things happened as the footsteps reached the bottom stair. The TV shut off, and the front door swung open. I screamed loudly and jumped up. Sadie, what's the matter, honey? My mother ran into the room. I threw my arms around her and cried. I told her what had happened and what I had heard. She didn't believe me. She thought I had fallen asleep and dreamt of it. I refused to sleep in that room again, so Nancy said she would. The night passed without incident. The very next morning, Nancy told my mom that she believed me. That all night she heard what she thought were footsteps in the attic, and the door had shut on its own. We decided to leave a day early. I don't know what I experienced in that house, but I know it scared me terribly. There really are things that go bump in the night. Number 10. Harris Street by Vanessa In our home on Harris Street, we've encountered everything. From disembodied voices, dark figures, levitating items, shaking beds, to full-out physical manifestations of family members who weren't in the home at the time, or they were on the opposite side of the house. Here are some things that happened to my mother. But first, let me give you a little more information on my youngest sister's imaginary friends. My little sister at the time had three imaginary friends. Katie, who was a little blonde girl. I don't recall the name of the lady. All I remember is my sister saying she had a blue dress and her hair was in a bun. The third wasn't really a friend, I suppose. She called him the woodchucker man. He was a very tall, heavyset man with blue overalls and a red long sleeve plaid shirt underneath. She said he was bald on top and had longer hair on the back of his head and that he was a very bad man who didn't like Katie. At the time, the crazy paranormal stuff wasn't happening, other than disembodied voices and the occasional dark figure. So all of us brushed off her friends, until one day I was watching TV in our living room. My sister was playing and talking with Katie, when she suddenly looked over to me and said, Katie wants to tickle you. I said, Okay, whatever, let her tickle me, and I kept watching the show on TV. Out of nowhere, I get this really strong tingling sensation in my armpits. It scared the shit out of me, but I didn't react at all. I wanted to ask my sister if she knew where Katie was tickling me. Before I could even ask, she looked at me, smiled and said, She's tickling you on your armpits. My heart sank. And I began to think, if Katie's real, what about the other two? On another note, my dad would work 4am to 5pm every day. So my mom would wake up to make him lunch and send him off. Then afterwards fall back asleep. So she's laying in bed and she flung her arm to the other side. And she hit someone. Thinking it was my dad, she brought her arm back to her side of the bed when suddenly she remembered having packed his lunch that morning, and she noticed that the body was too big to have been any of us kids, or even my dad. So, she rolled off the bed and crawled out of the room. That's when she started sleeping in the living room. I couldn't help but think that was the woodchucker man. Fast forward a week. My mother is asleep on the couch while the kitchen and living room have no wall separating each other. So she would leave the light on above the stove to keep the living room semi-lit. 
It's about 3 a.m. when she wakes up to the sound of drawers in the kitchen opening and closing. Thinking it's one of us, she ignores it at first. But the rummaging continues. Still half asleep, she asks, Who's there? There was no answer. Then the fridge opened. My mom opened her eyes and looked into the kitchen through the reflection of the television to see a little girl standing by the fridge holding it open. Still thinking it's my sister, she asks, My daughter, what are you looking for? She said the little girl looked at her through the reflection of the TV and disappeared. Then the fridge door just closed. My mother was so paralyzed with fear, she couldn't even move. Let's just say, she didn't get much sleep that night. It seems that not all spirits are evil. And also, thank you for sticking around to the very end. It means a lot to me. Now, if you enjoyed, please like, comment, and feel free to subscribe. And don't forget to check out the greatness that is Darkness Prevails, Joey's Nightmares, and Blue Spooky. Just because some spirits aren't evil doesn't mean all of them are not. So, you guys stay safe out there. Until next time.